We're on a roll here, aren't we? Welcome back to another episode of the Landscurve Podcast. I wanted to speak on a few things in the shortest possible time. Well, not really the shortest possible time. But the negative mind, the negative mind, the negative mind, the negative mind. Please don't bring your negative mind around me. I got too much to do. And there's so many people that will come around you, especially when they see your potential to actually accomplish something on a larger scale than they can ever think of doing. So it's their job to come around you and just drop these little nuggets of negativity and sit back and watch your responses and say things at you to distract you, to get you emotional and sit back and watch the responses to see if they can stop your momentum. There are too many people out here like that. They will pluck things from out of the sky about your life and throw it at you to see if it can stop you. And you got to always come back with something positive because they will never achieve anything the way that they think. And they know this for a fact and they don't want to lose your company. They want to drag you down to that pit of negativity and you ain't going for it because I know I ain't going for it. So get mad at me being positive. I'm going to keep on going. There was some fool that one time not too long ago said that this platform was going to die because they weren't on it no more. I'm like, what? I'm going strong. I'm enthusiastic and doors have opened. You can't believe or make them put into your mind because, see, I don't know about you. And this is not narcissism. This is not bragging. But I'm a champion. And you got to say this to yourself. If you've been through anything in life and you overcame it and you're still here, you have a shot at winning. I don't quit. I do fight smart, but I don't quit. I ain't quitting. Let's just say it that way. Every day that the creator gives me is a purpose for doing something. You have something to do. You have a legacy to leave. Don't you have children? And if you don't, don't you care about the world after you leave this place? There's just too much to do. The world is so big. If you don't get it this way, get it that way. If you don't get get it in America, go to another country. It's the same sun. It's the same rain. I can't say it's the same soil because the soil over here in the motherland is a lot different than that chemicalized, stripped out soil that can hardly grow anything. But do you want your mind to be the same way? And so you have to keep it moving while you have these entities around you because they're going absolutely nowhere. The same way they were living right now is the same way they were living five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and they're still talking about the past. They're still talking about the past. What are you doing for tomorrow? And they will say things to act like they're doing something for tomorrow, but you don't see them make any move to do anything. And they'll say, the time flew by so fast. I'm 95 years old and I was given all this time, but I never did anything. I wish I would have, could have, should have. That won't get it. Right now at this particular chronological age that I'm in, I have to go for the knockout. And I don't really have to. I can still chug a lug along to a points victory. But it's not something I'm forcing myself to do. But the negative people inspire me of what not to do. I say, my God, I don't want to sit around just staring down, looking somewhere dumb and not getting nothing done. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Especially when you know you have some kind of direction. And you have focus. And you know what reality is all about around you. And you know what you have to do. But I just love what I do. You got to do something you love. Matter of fact, I don't have enough time in the day to get the things accomplished that I need to get accomplished. You see, if you don't come out of the gate, you don't start the day by sitting around, you sit down for 10 hours doing nothing. You don't get momentum that way. You got to wake up with enthusiasm. Even if you have to do or make a to-do list. A to-do list. Like tomorrow this is what I'd like to accomplish. Now we know that days always don't, they don't always go the way you plan. You have emergencies. You have mishaps. You might get sick. We understand that. But you're not going to sit there, well, I'm not going to do nothing for tomorrow because I might have an emergency. I might have a mishap and I might get sick. I don't think about those things. Listen, when I was 16 years old, it might have been, might have been a little inconsiderate, but I made sure to help clean up 
after myself, what are you, what are you talking about, Lance? What did you do? <laughs> no. I started competing in bodybuilding competitions, and I was 16 years old, and I had the flu with a high fever. And I, I, my head was burning, and I was told to stay home. And I just said, well, listen, I just want to get some air. And I found myself at the gym, and I had a full workout and didn't go any less in my repetitions or the exercises. Now, that's too crazy because I know now that if you're sick, you're going to tear your body more down, down more, and your resistance is even going to get less. But that's how my mind is. If you try to stop me in doing something, that makes me more determined to learn and do it myself and actually accomplish it and bring it to life. So haters, come on. Naysayers, come on. There's so many people who got mad at me when I moved to Africa because they were seeing these little remarks. And now they feel trapped. <laughs> I'm not throwing off anybody here, but that's for me in my life. You may come move to Africa and you may feel trapped over here. I don't know. But I'm doing me. You have to do you. What do you want to do in life? What do you want to accomplish in life? What do you want to see happen in life? You just want to sit around and meet people on, on, on social media. <laughs> and so one day, did you hear about someone so they're dead? Hey, when, when the time comes for me. You have a lot of stuff to look at on what I accomplished and shared, not only with the world, I'm not trying to be somebody famous. This is for the people who like it, who enjoy it, and mainly my children. My children, or anybody's children for that matter. Because before, you know, you have your birth year and your death date, and a dash in the middle. What's your dash? What's your dash? What are you doing in between? What are people really going to say if you do have a home going service? Oh, he was, he was just so evil. He treated this one so bad. He was into all the gossip. And she was this. And they were that. Not the stuff you think they're going to say. But what are they really going to say? Right? Which really doesn't matter if you don't give a damn anyway. If you're a sociopath, you really don't care. Right? If you're a psychopath or a narcissist, you really don't care. But also, as you build your legacy, you got to make sure to share your sweetness with those who have earned it and deserve it. And who the spirit tells you to give it to and share it with. Because see, there are a lot of Decepticons out here. They suck from you. They see where they can get to a certain position with you. And then when they're done and when they know that you know who they are, they get scared and they run. Let them. It's less weight. It's, it's no dead weight on you. That's the thing. How are you going to move a dead weight on you? As soon as you identify dead weight, get rid of it. You don't have to give it a two-week notice. Like, I'm firing you in two weeks. Every second of every day of every week and every month and year of your life and decade has to count for something. You see them big termite hills, what we call the ant hills, but I found out as termites, I'm still going to call it the ant hill, <laughs> right? To build that thing, each termite had to take a, 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 a grain of dirt and they all had to have the same singular purpose of mind and collectively they built that anthill that is so much it's towering it's so bigger than me a little ant with a unified mind well, imagine us as a people having a unified mind, but you can't have a unified mind with people who are confused and lazy and not motivated to do anything except to talk. I said today I'm going to rest and make some con content, but I'm also going to take a walk and maybe walk about maybe 10 miles. Maybe I'm, I'll ride my bike. It doesn't matter to me what time of the day and night it is. I'm going to try to really get my sleep and be in the sun more, but it doesn't matter to me. Movement, get up, move towards something. I can't, I really can't, I just can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. Even in my sleep, I'm scheming righteously on some kind of progress. And people will say, well, how do you do it? I just don't waste time. 
I just don't think from the negative. I think, and lots of negative things have happened to me. Did it stop me? No. You get around it, you get up, you brush yourself off, and you keep moving. I have no time for the past, except to refer back to it for the lesson that it may hold in me or for me. It's in me, but it's for me. Okay, let me go to my library uh, uh, books of the past. And okay, 1983, I remember when this happened. And so now I'm faced with the same dilemma. What could I learn from that time period in my life personally when I learned the lesson to make it better for myself right now? But to sit there, in 1983, this person dumped me. And about, but it was a good year in 1981 because in 1982, and, and uh, you got me going in circles. Bam, bam, bam. Your life is going in circles. You can't, you can't, I can't. And then you get older and start having regrets. I don't have time for regrets, I'm too busy. Hold on to your regrets and find somebody to talk to about it. I don't have time to waste. Look, if I'm going to talk about regrets, I'm going to talk about mine. I don't want to hear about your regrets. It's not doing anything for me. Energy begets energy. <laughs> At last, the time is near. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't carry your baggage after I got off the baggage off of my shoulders. I can talk to you and counsel you, and what, but you want me to, okay, I'm going to take it from you. You earned it. You can put it down where it doesn't bother you anymore and walk away into a new chapter of your life. That's the problem with us. We stay stuck so long. We don't want to change it's like we want to be wallowed in this stuff. There's certain individuals who know they got to talk about the same things every single day. Take a day and not talk about these things. Can you do it? And they don't realize it. Hey, if I go back to New York City right now, and I have not lived in New York City since uh, early uh, uh, 2001. I'm telling you, there are guys that are going to be on some of the same corners, street corners, with a malt liquor, smoking a joint and, and a cigarette or whatever, and probably with the same clothes with a big belly hanging over it, doing the same thing. Man, I'm living, man, you know. You're dead. The vegetables, they serve their purpose more than you. You got feet and you standing in the same spot. The vegetables are chilling out in the sun, getting the nutrients for the people who eat them. Come on now. Can't we go higher? Are we just spectators? We all have something that people would want to watch and learn from. And even the people who are negative, I learn from them because I don't want to. That, that's what you don't want to be. That's what you don't want to be. Because energy transfers and people will see that you have momentum. Oh, yeah, I can hook my cart up to that horse. And I'll get better. Is that what you want as a person who's pulling somebody else's cart and maybe multiple carts and dozens and hundreds of people's spiritual carts that are drained down into nothing and don't want to learn how to cultivate some spiritual energy so they can get up peppy in the morning and get something accomplished? I used to make fun of Mr. Skurf sometimes. We used to have our, our inside jokes. And I'd say, yeah, I'd wake up, you know, on the days that we had off together, you know, and I'd wake up and you're in the backyard and mowed the lawn. I like mowing the lawn. You mowed the lawn. You pulled the big heavy pots. You went to Home Depot or Lowe's and bought new plants with new dirt and filled them up and uh, cooked breakfast. Have it waiting for me. You know, I mean, I would stay up late and do my stuff online, right? But I'd wake up and, what time did you wake up? Oh, I woke up at 5.30. 5.30, and here I am at 10 o'clock. Talk about, yeah, I'm going to attack my day. So wouldn't that be good to wake up before the sun? You know what I mean? Because I've been up so long and two days straight and three days straight where the sun looks at me and say, hey, man, you still up? I left you and went around the whole world and you're sitting here in the same space. Because you know the longer you stay up, the more ineffective you become. So right now I'm in a point of even rearranging my life even more so 
to keep the tunnel vision. Because most people don't realize the chronological time is not promised to you. But you can, you can, you can amplify the power of time, which is artificial on other levels, but very much real on this level. You can amplify it, make things happen. You fall down, you get back up, you keep going. Somebody cusses you out, me, you might cuss them out a little bit, but keep your feet walking while you're cussing them so you're moving into your destiny. So many of us, our destiny, we don't know. We're not trying to shape, we're not trying to form. Our creator has given us the right to dream about a destiny if you don't have one, but know you have one. And is your destiny gonna be something good? Is it gonna be something fruitful? Here we are running around at the ages that we are, 50, 60, 70 years old, thinking like we teenagers. You're talking like you got like 100 years. I wish I did have it. I don't think I may look as good as I do now. But you must do what you do on this level to prepare for the next level. What the le next level is, I don't know how it goes on that side, but I know that we have to use our energy for something good, our life force as it flows through us. And we have the mental, the physical, and the spiritual, and we got to cater to all three and all combinations of each, percentage-wise. But most of us don't think about that. We just think about the next thing we can eat on and eat and the next person we can eat. <laughs> I ain't talking cannibalism. I slipped that one in there. But we're thinking about the creature comforts. We're watching somebody peeping out the window. You could tell the nosy people in the neighborhoods peeping out the window. Broken Venetian blinds. Windows all dusty. Can't even clean up. Don't want to clean up. Can't even clean up right. Your mind is so clogged up. Now, I'm not speaking to anybody specific, but today I got so much done, more than most. And it was effortless because you ride the wave of your momentum that you have created. It's just like when you see an ambula uh, ambulance, <laughs> an avalanche. See how my mind is racing? Yeah, but if you're at the bottom of that avalanche, you better try to get, jump in an ambulance and get up out of there or get injured or smothered or covered. But when you see that avalanche, it might be one little rock or, or boulder or something that comes down from the top of the mountain and pushes the stuff and gravity and momentum build up and it's a whole lot of dirt or a whole lot of snow, a combination of both, and you better not be at the bottom of that mountain. And we have the avalanche of past pain and trauma that we don't want to get rid of. And it, and it smothers our mind. And we can't move forward. It is, that's the way it is. There's a million analogies in nature. You standing below a mountain and this avalanche is coming down. And lots of times you can look at it and see that this ain't going to work out. I need to get on up out of here. But some of us are delusional, not seeing reality for what it is. That this is not productive for me to stand here under this avalanche of ignorance that's pushed from a dysfunctional family who has lived in confusion all their life. And you have certain family members who can discern this and they stay right in it. Because they're my family. No, you're a DNA sharer. You want to get around people who have the same spirit. You have to be related in spirit. Because we stay stuck together just because we came out the same portal. We came out of the same womb. Uh-uh. It don't work that way. You learn that quick. The quicker you learn it, the better you'll be. Why should I have an allegiance to America when I can live better somewhere else? Why you leave America? Why you want to stay there, get pulled over by cops and shot by them and treated funny on your job and get fired, get less pay? Have your kids getting caught up in stuff with all the wicked, twisted temptations that are put forth to them? I witnessed and experienced a few days ago, I won't say the name, but these two young boys, eight years old and 10 years old, were so mannerable so well raised articulate yes I'll say it a pleasure to be around very much aware 
And we say sometimes, well, those kids, they're, they're, they're ahead of their time. That's where the, kid, the children are supposed to be. All of us are supposed to be intelligent and mannerable. It's something the parents didn't do when you see a bad example out there of these children who don't have the proper start in life. And there are a lot of situations out there, you can't say it's their fault, but that's what caused it. Cause and effect. That's what caused it. The neglect. They can't rise no higher than what their parents or parent gave them. And we have all these misled parents or single parents, mothers and fathers. You know, we got a lot of good single fathers out of here too. And some bad ones and some bad single mothers. Who they want a medal because they're a single mother. And I'm raising my children on my own. And they got the best designer clothes on and they got the best this and the best that and they got jewelry and they got the best shoes and the best dresses and, and, and all. I keep their hair did, not hair done, but hair did. That is so ignorant. If you one of them hair did people, pl please learn the English language. Hair did, hair done. Oh God, it kills me, right? But the children have no sense in their head because you've put superficial things in their mind as being more important than putting something in your head. I love me and I love being with me. My mind, if you can only experience my mind, as I process the experiences that I've gone through in life, if you can be a part of that. <laughs> my thoughts are like movies, right? Right? My little thoughts are like music videos. Good ones too. Good long ones. When I dream, it's like reading a book. Because I have so many experiences processed in and lessons learned and things put in me long before I knew to do it. My mother spoke to me while I was in the womb. I was always around cultured, dignified situations that I could learn from. There's no squirrel book. There's no snake book, alligator book. There's no bird book. How do they learn? They learn by being around birds, rabbits, they, those animals, which they operate in the way that they were made. So I really can't call them animals like they're lower. Technically, they're supposed to be lower. But since we act so low, below what we're made to be, we're lower than them. They're excelling. You see what I mean? They're the one that's doing real good. They're the ones that's operating and, and healthy. They don't have no doctor out there in nature, but the plants are the doctors. We've torn ourselves away from this world and we have no clue. We're just alive. We're not living. And I think it's a terrible thing. I'm sorry for the rant. Every now and then I have to get this stuff off. I really do. It's crazy, but there's so much that I've seen in this life and experienced. I just want to share it. Maybe it can help you out. You know what I mean? Because I had to learn things the hard way. And I ain't trying to go back to doing nothing the hard way. I'm not trying to be this age and go through adolescent issues. I'm not trying to be this age and go through issues that I may have not have known how to handle because of my emotions or getting duped or not knowing what to look out for. And I was pretty good back in them years because, you know, my parents raised me up a certain way. I had the book sense and the street sense. And still things will have you saying, I can't believe I got myself in this situation. Not a, I'm good the way I am. I just want to share my stuff, ply my trade, and get more into my craft and my area of expertise and grow and continue on before my time is up. That's all drama free. So when the drama people and the whisperers and the gossipers and Decepticons and two-faced two people want to talk to you, you dump them and get rid of them, it's better for you. I'm so enthusiastic that I have accomplished with Mrs. Skurve things that we talked about and we're going into the next step of things. I'm like, wow, I got here. While others on the internet hooped and hollered and, ah! 
He took YouTube money and he and he took Cash App money and he built a mansion. And they sitting down in the same spot. Sitting in the same spot, mad. Don't be mad at me. Stop talking and start doing. Go for your reality. And there's no time limit where, oh, I had to wait five years. No. Get up and do it. And make the leap. A smart leap, not a dumb leap. You make a dumb leap, you're going to be in a dumb place. You have to look at every aspect of your endeavors. You have to move in a sure-footed manner. Because the older you get, the consequences are higher when you make foolish moves. Understand that. What you can get away with when you are 17, you might not be able to get away with it when you're 59. And there's so many people that want to keep you in that 17-year-old space as you're 59 like me and want to see me make dumbass decisions. Nah. I learned from the things that I went through when I was 13, 17, 19, 22, 20, whatever year it was. I ain't going back. You should have been sharpening your blade your whole life as you go through things and when things are good. Don't put the blade down when things are good. I ain't going to need that blade for nothing. You need to sharpen that sword constantly, every day, even if it's one stroke. Chit -chit. And keep yourself ready Because the moment that you drop your guard And like I said the other day Out in nature It's perfect order as it is And every animal Has a way of defending themselves Whether it's sharp teeth Or claws Or like the meerkat The ability to see things fast And run Catch me if you can and the only way that they get caught, we say, oh man, that's a vicious animal that killed him. But we don't, we don't say, oh, he dropped his guard or she dropped their guard. And we only get it and catch hell when we open the door and let the devil right on in because we dropped our guard. You know you shouldn't be doing that. Why you do it? I take a chance. But well, yeah, okay. You might take the chance and get away with it, but there's a certain risk that's involved. Are you willing to take the risk and the consequences that will come if it's your time to get caught? So stay motivated for the good things in life. But the price is heavier to pay when you make dumbass decisions and you fall most of the time when you get older. It's kind of hard to get up. Not that you can't. Anybody can come back from anything that's against them. But why do you want to Continue to have these hard lessons to learn I just don't understand Like no, 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 no I'm good, I'm good No, 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 no I'm good You gotta keep it that way Because like I said It's a shark infested world out here And also it's a good world On the natural side If you honor and respect the laws of nature I'm using the word law More and more You see that? Positively, Angela, you're making me use this word law because I'm understanding what you're saying is true. We can run across the street with our eyes closed, but probability has it that you keep doing that, you're going to get run over by a car. And I don't care if it's a little old Toyota Tercel from back in the 1980s. It ain't going to feel good when you get run over. And you say to yourself, why didn't I open my eyes and look and see what was in front of me before I made the leap? Anyway, much love to you all. Salute to the brothers and much love to the sisters. That's just something to think about. It's a few minutes to talk. I hope it motivated you to help you dig deep, to build your legacy, and to attack the day righteously, to make it something of progress. Because each day you have is a brush stroke on a painting that's a masterpiece. And each day is another block that you can lay down or a brick when you build that fabulous mansion. No, it doesn't have to be big. Because look at us. We, we're not as big as mansions. But we are built in a magnificent way. Look within our rib cage. How many organs are in there working together at the same time? 
but we marvel at the newest luxury car. That's no way in comparison. And yet we don't respect how our creator made us because there's no way it's just going to fall out the sky and be made like this. So appreciate a little more of what you have and what you've been given because you didn't make this thing yourself. So don't abuse it by the negative energies that are out there. Be positive. Dream. Have visions. Have goals. And work hard and get focused to manifest just like when they dig and they find whole cities underground it may have been hidden for a while but they discover it you may be hidden from the world for a while but you got to be ready and you got to put the work in because one day you will be discovered I'm not talking about no Hollywood foolishness I'm talking about being appreciated for who you are and what you've exemplified your whole life, even when you've wasted some years, even when you wasted most of your life, you say, but you learn and you come back and you finish the race. You ever see those marathon races? I already didn't say goodbye. I'm, I'm still talking. You ever see those marathon races where it's like three days later, there's somebody like, <laughs> damn, they're walking to get past the finish line. But you know what? They finished. And just like the first person who says, yes, I ran the marathon and got first place and I finished. Well, the person who was in last place pretty much is not going to say that, but they can echo the same statement without the one thing that they were in first place. And they can say, yes, I entered the marathon. Pause, pause, pause. I ain't tell you I was last and I finished. The main thing you finish, you started, you finish. And like I said, back in 2001, I said when I started doing this, I'm going to be me. Um, it's going to be part of me. Therefore, effortless. I don't have to wear no mask. Everybody or anybody can wear a mask. I'm still going to be me. It's effortless. All right, let me shut up. Let me get out of here. I got more content to make. I'd like to come on live later on. I'll throw this up. And um, I'm just enthused. I, Sorry, haters, I'm just enthused. If you're not chosen for something and you motivate towards something, that's good too. It's good to motivate, but some of us are chosen. Some of us are built for this. It's just the way it is. I'm going to leave you on that thought. But know that I love you all and I speak out of love. I just want to see all of us do good. I just can't stand to see how broken we've become. So I'm not throwing off on you, but sometimes we have to show some tough love and come with the force and make you think. And usually that will jumpstart us to our own personal brand of excellence. Lance Kerb out. Peace. <laughs>